Welcome back. The January 6th committee issued their strongest indicator yet that when the committee has completed its work, it could refer criminal charges against former President Donald Trump to the Justice Department. The committee argued in a court filing released last night that they believe and have enough of a legal basis for a court to take them seriously that Trump and his associate associates engaged in a criminal conspiracy to try to overturn the 2020 election. Now, a key part of the filing lays it out pretty clearly. The select committee has a good faith basis for concluding that the president and members of his campaign engaged in a criminal conspiracy to defraud the United States. Now, the filing itself is part of an attempt by the committee to force John Eastman, a lawyer for Trump, the infamous lawyer who tried to come up with this scheme, to turn over documents he wrote arguing that Mike Pence had the legal authority to somehow overturn the election. Eastman claims the memos are protected by the attorney-client privilege between himself and Trump. But the committee argues that since their evidence points to criminal acts by Trump and his associates, Eastman cannot invoke privilege to keep the documents out of their hands. Trump responded in a statement this morning falsely claiming that the real conspiracy was Democrats rigging the election. Joining me now is Carol Lamb, a former U.S. attorney and MSNBC legal analyst. So, Carol, first in this court filing, if the court finds that the committee is correct and that a crime may have been committed, then what? Yeah, so, so Chuck, there are actually a couple of arguments that the, um, that the January 6th committee makes to this judge. And again, it's important to understand the context here. This isn't a final report by the January 6th committee, but it is, it is a, uh, a legal brief that they filed in the California federal court arguing that these many, many documents that Eastman has declined or refused to produce uh, should be produced. And there are a couple of interesting arguments. One, as you've uh, described, is the argument that uh, these fall under what we call the crime fraud exception to the attorney-client privilege. That is, you can't communicate with your client, even if the president was his client. You can't communicate with your with your client in a way that furthers a crime or a fraud. So that's one basis on which the January 6th committee says you should produce these documents. Another one is a very interesting um, argument that these emails were all done on the Chapman University email system, and right. it's very clear that those are not private communications and they should be produced. So there are, there are a couple of arguments that the January 6th committee makes that could be persuasive to this judge. If the judge finds that it's these are these are good arguments, particularly the crime fraud exception. Uh, that's just one step in the proceeding, because what the right. January 6th committee is asking is that the judge take a look at these, you know, 11,000 documents and determine which ones do fall under the crime fraud exception. So it is just one step along the way. And yeah. it's it's sort of the midst of the of the committee's investigation. But it does show what they believe the evidence is pointing to at this point. Carol, I'm curious. I assume that many a federal government has attempted to do this with mob attorneys. Um, what is the success rate of being able to sort of uh, overcome an, an attorney-client privilege claim by making this criminal that, hey, this attorney may have helped facilitate a crime? Yeah, the crime fraud exception is is a real exception to the attorney client privilege, and it has been used many times. I've 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 argued it um, and succeeded several times mm -hmm. um, because you know they, an attorney cannot hide behind the attorney client privilege if they are part and parcel of of a fraud or a crime. And I I think the uh, the lift for the January sixth committee here is to persuade the judge that there is enough evidence that mm -hmm. this actually is a crime and not just a lawyer sort of advising his his clients. But, you know, certainly the optics of John mm -hmm. Eastman having invoked the Fifth Amendment right. in his uh, subpoena to testify and refusing to testify for that reason, it's, it's not good optics for him in this context. Now, the bar is pretty low uh, right. You, you don't have to prove that a crime was committed. You have to you only have to prove that a crime may have been committed. Right. Like it is it, it there is it's a lower level than perhaps what the Justice Department may have to deal with in deciding whether there were crimes committed by these folks. Yeah, that is a really good point. It's it's not it's certainly not the criminal standard of beyond a reasonable doubt. The judge is not sitting as a as an ultimate juror uh, in a criminal case here. Uh, the judge has to believe that there is uh, simply enough evidence to um, to clear the bar of believing that there's a crime. And it is a little more difficult here. I think we should be you know, we should all acknowledge that that it is it is not um, 
it, you know, it, it is not like a, a drug crime or a murder where it's yeah. absolutely clear. You know, there, there are still arguments about that. But again, what the January 6th committee is just trying to do right now is get those documents. And again, they have a couple of arguments that are pretty good for getting those doc documents, even aside from the crime, uh, crime fraud exception. But but yes, you're right. If a judge actually says, yes, I do believe that the the, the January 6th committee has produced enough evidence uh, mm -hmm. to clear the bar that, you know, it, it looks like a crime may have been committed here, uh, that that is not dispositive in, in any way of whether the Justice Department would decide yeah. in its discretion whether it should bring a bring a case. You are a former U.S. attorney. Would you be ready to take this case to Merrick Garland and ask him to, to go? You know, uh, I, I was a, I was a fraud prosecutor, and we tend to be pretty a pretty cautious bunch. And I would want to see all of those documents, or as many as I could, before I made that decision, Chuck. Yeah, I imagine. Carol Lamb, really appreciate you coming on and, and, and explaining this to the audience. Uh, I think it was very helpful. Thanks. Good to see you.